Hiện nay có rất nhiều bạn quan tâm đến kết cấu thép, những video này hội quán yang.com dành cho các bạn trẻ, những người chưa tiếp xúc, học tập tìm hiểu nhiều về kết cấu thép theo admin để dễ học hơn về kết cấu thép. Trước tiên chúng ta phải hiểu về các dạng phá hoại dưới tác dụng của tải trọng có thể gặp trong kết cấu thép nhà dân dụng và công nghiệp công nghiệp một kéo đứt bền. The tensile test First test, material with yield point phenomenon. In the first tensile test, a plain carbon steel with yield point phenomenon is to be tested. This is the test piece. It has a cylindrical test region with an original diameter of 10 mm and an original gauge length of 100 mm. Within this test region, distance marks have been drawn at regular intervals. They help to visualize and measure the plastic behavior of the specimen. Using a hand control, the tester moves the upper crosshead into its correct starting position. Now he can place the threaded ends of the test piece in the lower and upper grips of the testing machine. In the next step, he swings the extensometer into its working position and checks that everything is correctly prepared. Then he selects all necessary testing parameters on the control computer. Ready. The test starts and the extensometer's sensor arms are carefully pressed onto the test piece. This way, the gauge length can be measured throughout the whole tensile test. The gauge length is displayed at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. At the beginning, it amounts to 100 millimeters. During the tensile test, the test piece is slowly and constantly elongated with a standardized speed. The force that the test piece opposes to the imposed elongation is recorded and can be seen at the bottom left-hand corner of the computer display. The material behavior can best be observed in a force elongation diagram. The force F is being plotted upwards on the vertical axis, the elongation delta L towards the right on the horizontal axis. At first, the force rises rapidly. Force and elongation are proportional and form a steep straight line in the diagram. In this area, the material behaves elastically. If the test piece were to be unloaded from this area, it would spring back completely to its original length. In materials with yield point phenomenon, the end of the elastic area can be seen clearly. The plastic deformation starts abruptly and is accompanied by a sudden drop of force. If the test piece were to be unloaded now, it would not spring back to the original length, but instead show a permanent elongation. In the next stage of the tensile test, an almost constant force level with slight fluctuations occurs. This phenomenon is called the Luders effect. After a certain strain, known as the Luder strain, the force increases again. The material opposes an increasing force against the imposed elongation. Its strain hardens. Up to the point of maximum force, the test piece is strained uniformly along its length. This means that the test piece gets longer and thinner but keeps a cylindrical shape. As soon as the maximum force is reached, a neck begins to form at one point of the test piece. All further plastic deformation now only takes place at the neck and eventually the test piece fractures there. Hai, mất ổn định tổng thể trong mặt phẳng. This video shows a pin ended column of low slenderness being tested in compression. This type of specimen is commonly referred to as a stocky column. The specimen is a rectangular hollow section made of structural steel.
The length has been chosen such that the failure is dominated by the material strength. The loading diagram shows a purely axial compressive force evenly applied to both ends of the specimen. The testing rig is now starting to apply a compressive force to the specimen. We can see the top end displacing and the column begins to deflect sideways as a result of the material damage which can be seen at mid-span on the concave side. Once this occurs, the column begins to lose its load carrying capacity. This particular phenomenon is not in the elastic but in the plastic range. Therefore, the failure is governed by the material rather than the geometry of the specimen. Turning the specimen to the side, you can see that the deformation has localised to the mid-span of the specimen in a plastic hinge. The graph initially shows a linear relationship between force and displacement. In this range, no sideways displacement has taken place. However, once failure takes hold, the slope begins to reduce rapidly and the point at which the curve becomes flat marks the failure load. Ba, mất ổn định uốn xoắn, ta hay gọi là mất ổn định ngoài mặt phẳng. Okay, we have two uh, angles here. Uh, the difference between these two is the leg size. One is twice the size of the other, so you would think that the larger one should carry more load. But the theory we have seen previously indicates that this should carry less load and will demonstrate it. As a matter of fact, of these two loads, this member is going to buckle at the smaller one. So you can see that the section has twisted in a torsional buckling mode. And this is what's known as torsional buckling. Now I'm going to put in the smaller member. I'll put on the same load. and it carries it with no problem. It's going to take a larger load to buckle this member. So larger does not mean stronger. 4. Mất ổn định cục bộ. Video dưới đây cho thấy bản cánh bị. This video shows a plate girder being tested under bending. The material used in this test is an aluminium alloy. The web has shear stiffness to prevent it from buckling. The loading diagram shows the beam is subjected to four-point bending. The beam is simply supported and it is also restrained laterally at four individual locations along the length of the beam. The testing rig is now starting to apply a pair of equal vertical loads to the central third of the beam. As the loading is applied, the beam begins to sag. The top flange is effectively under pure compression. Once the compressive stress exceeds the flange critical stress, buckling of the flange will occur. This can be seen as ripples along the length of the flange. These ripples reduce the beam stiffness and deflections become higher. Now let's zoom in on the central portion and at the same time look down from above. You can see that the ripples are evenly distributed along the top of the flange. Eventually the flange shows plastic deformation and failure occurs. Let's have a look at the left hand end of the beam to see another effect. Local buckling in the flange reduces the stiffness of the overall cross section which affects the internal stresses within the beam. Here. Shear buckling of the web is seen as a direct consequence. This type of combination of buckling modes can in fact cause the beam to collapse catastrophically. The graph shows an initial linear relationship between the applied force and the vertical displacement corresponding to the bending of the beam. However, once local buckling of the flange occurs, 
the slope progressively reduces until it converges onto a reduced but still positive value. This demonstrates the inherently stable post-buckling response from the observed phenomenon.